we can see these effects even in zero magnetic field. If, we look, if you look at the figures in our paper, you can see that we, we, we can tell the difference between the tunneling processes in which electrons conserve their handedness and those in which they don't conserve the handedness and the, 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 the transitions, the current due to the transitions which preserve the handedness totally dominate the current. We can almost forget about the, the other types of transition. We can study this in more detail if we turn the electron motion into a bit more like the electron motion around an atom. If you remember that for your hydrogen atom we have a, a series of energy levels Similarly for my graphene, I have a, now got a, sim, a series of energy levels, something like that. And now each of these energy levels now looks like either a left-handed one. I can get electrons in this level which are left-handed or I can get them right-handed. And I can get electrons occupying both of those states. There's an electron in this one and that one which I represent by the red dots. Here's my tunnel barrier. Now all I've got to do when I apply a magnetic field, I can now go from this atomic-like level to an atomic-like level here, for example. Something like this. I've lined these two levels up so I can now, these electrons can now tunnel with energy conservation into these empty states. My voltage has allowed me to empty these states at the same energy. I'm making this side negatively biased and this side positively biased. So these are empty, empty states that the electrons can go into. So I now draw another left hand, make that thumb a bit bigger, and another right hand. And my right hand electron, when I've lined these two, two uh, sets of levels up, my right hand electron much prefers to go into that state. And my left hand electron much prefers to go into that state. Crossing over hands is taboo. The electrons don't want to do it. And that's what we're detecting in our experiments. And that's how we're demonstrating that the electrons behave as chiral particles in our graphene sheets. Is this an unexpected thing? I mean, who said they'd change? I would have thought it'd be obvious that if they were there. Well, I think if you asked a theoretician, there's some very distinguished theoreticians who've worked out the theory of all this. Is well, that's what we'd expect. But nevertheless, as an ex you know, if, you, if you're making these devices or you're doing measurements on them, you know that these samples aren't perfect. They're handmade. Uh, it takes days to make them, it takes weeks to measure them and see these properties. And you would, it is certainly possible that the handedness gets scrambled if there are defects in the material or if even there's a residual misalignment. You might expect that to screw up the chirality. Or if the electrons, which are charged, move through the barrier of boron nitride, there the atoms are also charged, the electrons could shake the atoms and we could get scattering events. But to our pleasure and surprise, Chirality is robustly conserved in these devices, as, almost as robustly conserved as electrical charge. Now, you, I think you'll ask me, well, that's all very good and makes theoretical, experimentalists and the theoretical people happy. Does this have any applications? Well, the answer is I don't know yet. But we know that people fiddling around with electron motion back at the end of the 19th century, as, as we moved into the 20th century, people started controlling the motion of the electrons and information was, was you, could, you could send Morse code messages you could, down wires, you could, send, you could have radios and listen, enjoy a concert on the radio. Uh, the, the 20th century was the golden age of electronics, and of course it's still going on. Our, our transistor chips, our laptops and mobile phones, everything depends on electrons and controlling their motion. Uh, but it's mainly the charge that we're exploiting, the charge that the electrons are carrying. We're not counting their mass, we're counting and measuring their charge. Recently, people have been exploiting the spin of electrons. We spin, if you can align more electrons up with one spin this way compared to the spin going the other way, you can get magnetism. And of course we use magnetic storage of information on, on hard disks. But there's also a field emerging now called spintronics where instead of using the charge of the electron, we're using its spin. So now the interesting question arises, can we exploit in some way the chirality of the electrons for a new type of device? And maybe we can call that term, can I write it down? Uh, chiraltronics. Well, we dreamt up that name. Those of us who been put it, the, all the authors, we've talked about this thing and some of my colleagues like this name and some of it, uh, some of them don't, but we thought we were the first pe people to, to coin it. But to our disappointment, we looked up on Google a few weeks ago and it's actually been used already. But can we do this? 
I just don't know, but we'll see. It's fun trying, and so we'll carry on looking at chirality.